Hello, good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to Baby Code Three Hour Sessions. I'm Tanu Vermani, an IDP certified trainer and a TEFL and TESOL certified trainer. So I'm back with my 15 days IELTS course. Right? How can you crack IELTS in 15 days? We're gonna talk about it. And today is our first sessions for 15 days IELTS course. So our first session will be about two false not given questions, matching heading. matching information questions so let's see how you can crack your ielts in 15 days and the session number 1 is about reading module so as you know reading is for 60 minutes and you will be having different type of questions here so the very first question will be about true false not given questions right now what are true false not given questions true false not given questions are also called as locating and identifying for specific information now remember that this type of question they require you to locate and identify specific information this information will be presented in text as facts the information in the text follow the order of the question so the information you need for first statement will be found before the information for the second statement so when you read the statement you have been given you then have to decide if the information helps you to decide if an answer is like true because the statement agrees with the information that means it is exactly the same false means if the statement is opposite that means it contradicts with the information or not given means there is no information on this that means ni neither it is true nor it is false then it is not given right now some strategies for true false not given questions are which you need to keep in mind while following or while answering this type of question very first is the questions are asked in the same order in which the text or information is given in order to know the correct answer you need to understand the text given check which fact about the text is true false or not given read the first paragraph carefully try to answer the questions if you find the answer then do not rush to write it read the sentence carefully and then decide whether the answer is correct or incorrect when you don't find the answer in first paragraph move to the second paragraph and repeat the procedure you have to read the information text carefully to find whether the keywords in the question are present in the text or not next one you have to keep in mind that the text will be paraphrased rephrased that means the question may be worded with synonyms of the words contained in the text if you look at the controlling words in the information then you can easily find whether the fact given is true false or not given do not spend a lot of time on one question if you cannot find the fact in information then answer is probably not given sometimes words like yes no no information are used so they are slightly different where you may have to look for opinion instead of facts instead of focusing only on the keywords try to read the sentence completely identify the answer and then match the facts with the given correct and accurate information in the text once you feel that particular fact matches the text you need to read it again to know if the fact given is true or false you need to keep in mind that if the fact is true then should be an exact match if you are really unsure and cannot understand the synonym then you can mark it as not given underline the words which you feel might be the correct answer so that you can refer them at the end so let's do one exercise the passage is about life and work of marie curie So you have to skim the paragraph, but before skimming, you have to read the questions first. Always read the question first. So the question says, "Do the following statements agree with the information in the given passage or not? True if it agree, false if it contradicts, and not given means when there is no information." So first is Marie Curie's husband was a joint winner of both Marie's Nobel prizes. The question one says that is Marie Curie husband was a joint winner of both Marie's Nobel prizes. You have to check this. Second is Marie became interested in science when she was a child. So we will look that did she became interested in science when she was a child? 
Next is Mary was able to attend the Sorbonne because of her sister's financial contribution. So was she able to attend the Sorbonne because of her sister's financial contribution? Let's find out the first one because they are in order. So let's look if her husband was a joint winner of both Nobel Prizes or not. So I'm skimming the paragraph quickly. You also have to do the same for me. And let's find the answer number one first. Okay, so I got my keyword here. She's famous for her work on radioactivity and was twice a winner of Nobel Prize. With her husband, Perry Curie and Henry Bacterial, she was awarded for 1903 Nobel Prize for Physics and was then sole winner for 1911 Nobel Prize for Chemistry. So she got two prizes. One was in 1903 and one was in 1911. 1903, her husband was a winner, joint winner. But 1911, she was a sole winner. So that means he was, her husband was not a joint winner in both of the prizes. So this is false. So the first statement is false. Second one, she became interested in science when she was a child. So we will look after the second one, after the first one. So from childhood, Mary was remarkable for her prodigious memory. And at the age of 16, won a gold medal on completion of a secondary education because her father lost his saving through bad investment. And this one. So there is nothing about that she interested in science during her childhood. So it's not given, right? Now she was able to attend Sorbon because of her fi sister's financial contribution. Let's find after the second one. So through bad investment, she worked as a teacher. From her earnings, she was able to finance her sister Bronia's medical study in Paris on understanding that Bronia would in turn later help her to get an education. And this promise was fulfilled. So yes, this is something which is true that Bronia helped her after and began to study at Sorbonne. So Mary was able to go or study in Sorbonne because her sister helped her financially, right? So you can check the answers. False, not given and true. Any doubts and queries, you can leave your comments later on to the section part. Next is matching heading questions. So what are, what are matching heading questions? Matching heading questions means you have to match the headings to their respective paragraphs. So you will be having the labeled paragraphs here and you have to match those to the respective paragraphs. So we will look how you can answer this by step by step. First step is read the headings. Always read the headings first to completely understand their meaning. To do that, read each heading quickly and focus on the keywords. Now, what are keywords? Keywords are the most important terms which contain specific information like nouns, names, place, states, or things. Second thing is you need to understand the headings and the paraphrase. Each heading is unique, yet some may be similar. Just focus on the words to understand the subtle difference in the headings. Then paraphrase the heading. Now, what is paraphrasing? It means same text with different words without losing the meaning of the text itself. Since the words in the passage are different from the words in the heading, it is important to paraphrase headings, use synonyms of the keywords, and find answers more easily in the passage. Third step is skim read each paragraph. After you read the headings and paraphrasing it, skim read each paragraph. Now, what is skim reading? It's called as speed reading. The process of skimming or quickly reading the text so that you get the main idea. Avoid reading each and every word and spend no more than a minute on each paragraph. Read the first and last sentence of the paragraph. After skimming the paragraphs, read first and last sentence as they often contain the main idea. Now, what is the main idea? The main idea of a paragraph is author's message regarding the topic. It is often expressed explicitly. Fifth one, match the headings. After reading the first and last sentence, match up the main idea with the correct heading. Right? Now, what are the tips and tricks and some strategies for matching heading? First one is do not reuse any headings. Each headings can be used only once. When you have headings that are not used, don't try the process of elimination. 
technique with this question type do not even write words or phrases from the title as you answer the answers will be letter a b c or the roman numbers representing the headings do not read the entire passage ensure you skim read the main idea for each paragraph doing so will save your time paraphrase the heading recognize synonyms and similar words make sure your heading choose and reflect the main idea of the paragraph not specific details pay attention to the first two and the last sentence of the paragraph as each paragraph represents the main idea either at the beginning or at the end distinguish between main ideas and supporting information in the paragraph it's the best strategy remember that exact words may be used so look for synonyms now this is an exercise you have to choose the correct heading for section a to c from the list of headings Now, first, you have to read the passage. Skim the paragraph quickly. Read the first and the last sentence. Look for the keywords and paraphrasing. Okay, I'm giving you some time. Quickly read it, please. So, as I'm also skimming the paragraph with you, I can see the first. topic sentence of this paragraph is that the role of government in environment management is difficult but inescapable sometimes the state tries to manage the resources on its own so this is the topic and they are talking about resource management as well as some of the the whole range of policies are example of environmental management so in the list of heading we can see government and management of environment is there the fifth one right they are talking about whole and range of policies they are talking about also the environmental uh, the resource management right trying to manage the resources on its own so it's fifth one read the b paragraph quickly read it no activity affects more of the earth surface than farming it shapes third of this and then talking about the world food output mm -hmm. yes so see this now they are talking about food output right which has nothing to do with environmental impacts so they are talking about farming and they are talking about the food output so the second one is farming and food output see here food output they are talking about all food output here now third one section c all these activities may have a damaging environmental impact so they are talking about activities in the b section they are also giving some examples of deforestation right what else mhm mm water contamination soil erosion also so it is environmental impact of modern farming right ki modern farming se kya impact pada so they are talking about this second mark so you can check all your answers here once done let's move towards matching information questions now what are matching information questions you have to match the information to their respective paragraph now some statements will be given to you now in this reading questions you are required to match the sentence given the information that is contained in different paragraphs you must have strong skill for paraphrasing for this type of question and you need to prepare lots of paraphrases for the statement in order to locate the right paragraph which contains the information answers do not come in order in the passage right now what are the tips of paragraph matching is read through the questions Think of ways to paraphrase keywords. 
try to locate the keywords or paraphrases in the paragraph. Answers do not come in order. Answers should be a letter, not words. Start with the easiest question first, right? So we're gonna uh, try these steps. First, see this. This is a paragraph on Amundsen expedition to the South Pole. A paragraph, B paragraph, and the C one, right? So answers can be anywhere. You have to quickly skim the paragraph, but see in which paragraph A to C is the following information found. So I'm giving you some time, read your questions and then read your paragraph also. So once you start reading your first question, the success of Roald Emerson was celebrated worldwide except in one country. Right? So please read it and quickly find out the answers. Then I'm going to help you. Okay, so let's look at the first answer. It's in paragraph C here. Because they're talking about that the success was celebrated worldwide except in one country. The expedition success was widely applauded. Right, so widely applauded, except it was overshadowed in United Kingdom. His true plan secret was this and this, the permanent, so it was widely applauded. So it's in paragraph C. Amatson only heard about the death of Scott after he had read the South Pole. So see here in the paragraph A, the last two lines, Amatson and his team returned safely to the base and later learned that Scott and his four companions had died on their return journey. So they, they reached the pole, arrived at the pole on this. South Pole pe they were going and then they reached pole on this and then later they know about the Scott's death, right? Next is the base at the South Pole bears both Emerson's name and Scott. Now, third one is in C paragraph. The base at the South Pole bears both Emerson's name and Scott. The both name were there. Right? So see here. The permanent scientific base at the pole bears his name together with that of the Scott. So both names were there. Fourth one, Emerson had originally planned an expedition to the North Pole. So fourth one is here about expedition to the North Pole. So you can see here. The conquest of the North Pole and then means of an extended drift in now. He obtained use of Richard Nazan's Ship farm and undertook this and this prepared for this expedition were disrupted when in 1993. So Peary reached claim to have reached the North Pole, right? So they had originally planned an expedition to the North Pole. Fifth one, when Amundsen decided to aim for South Pole, did not reveal his intention. So it's here. Emerson then changed his plan, began to prepare for the conquest of South Pole, uncertain of the extent to which the public and his backer would support him. He kept this revised objective secret. That means he did not reveal his intentions. The British did not celebrate Emerson's success as did other countries due to the death of Scott. So it's here 
that the story of Sukkot's heroic failure overshadowed its achievement in the United Kingdom, unable to accept that Norwegian had been the first person to set foot in South Pole, but not in the rest of the world. So it was not celebrated in the United Kingdom, that means by the Britishers, right, due to death of the Scott, because of the Scott's heroic failure. So it's C paragraph. You can check all your answers. And still, if you face any doubts, any queries, please write your comments in the comment section. Keep practicing and keep learning for your IELTS journey. And these 15 days of IELTS will help you to achieve your score as soon as possible. So today we have practiced for two pulse not given matching heading and matching information questions. So please keep on practicing with the baby code application. You can rewatch the session anytime on application and even on the YouTube, right? Stay tuned for more tips and strategies so that you can boost your overall IELTS score. Thank you so much for watching our, our, uh, this live session and do not miss out. Start practicing and level up your IELTS game, right? So perform, analyze and crack your eyes. Do practice for all those three types of questions for the reading volume. Bye-bye. Take care, all of you.